we're brewing an IPA. Nice. Uh, yes, uh, Indian nice. Pale Ale, probably the style of beer that uh, caused the recent craft beer revolution back in the early 2000s. So starting classic. We're starting classic. So we're gonna try and keep it easy. We're gonna use four different types of malts. We're uh -huh. gonna use uh, pale ale malt. Or we're gonna use uh, wheat malt. We're gonna use flaked oats and carapils. Two different types of hops uh, that are gonna give the beer a fruity flavor. In particular, stone fruit. We're looking at apricot. What is stone peach. fruit? Uh, they are fruits with uh, large pips. Uh -huh. But we're looking for the exotic flavors. We're even looking for a bit of uh, pineapple mm -hmm. uh, as well. Nice. And hopefully we'll extract these flavors through the hops okay. and also through the yeast we're gonna use. We're gonna try and brew a beer that's gonna land around about 6% in uh, ABV. Um, would you say that's normal for, for IPAs? I would say that's a normal good strength uh, for an IPA. We're not gonna go too crazy. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking to brew around uh, 19 liters mm -hmm. uh, okay. today. Is that the recipe in your hand, I guess? This is the recipe. We created the recipe by using Brewer's Friend. Uh-huh, is that a, that's something? It's a website that has lots of different calculations. You can write recipes. You can uh, store your inventory there, mm -hmm. uh, digitally, of course. So you know what you have. And every time you create a new recipe, it takes that from your inventory and you can see what you have left. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing program. It does cost around two euros a month, but it's definitely worth it. So it's like it. a monthly subscription, basically. It's a subscription. Uh, but you can uh, get access to other people's recipes. Ah, right. They can see your recipes. Okay, There's a lot nice. of things you can do with this. So is this a recipe that you made or is it the recipe that you found? So this is a recipe uh, that I have created myself. Mm. Uh, it's based on a previous attempt at doing an IPA mm. using the same type of yeast. We're just going to tweak it a little bit. We're going to use uh, a new type of hop variety. Yeah, you sent some. Yeah, uh, which is quite exciting. I don't think many people have used that hop before, at least no one I know. Uh, so it should be fun to see what kind of uh, aroma and flavors we're going to get from yeah, that exactly. hop. Uh, we're also uh, using the recipe here as a reference to find out how much water we need. That's obviously very important. Uh, the pH level of the water. Um, it's going to tell us how much water we're going to boil off, etc, yeah. etc. Et so it's quite a useful piece of information. I see. Uh, yeah. So I highly recommend. Uh, using Brewer's Friend. Right. Unofficial sponsors of this video. <laughs> Unofficial sponsors of this video. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's good for them. And maybe for us. If you see this Brewer's Friend. <laughs> yeah, like Fun and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> We're also looking to do a beer today that's going to land around about 60 IBUs. They are international bitter units, the way of measuring a certain type of acid in the beer that makes it bitter. Okay. The alpha acids as they are called. Mm -hmm. uh, 60 is around about normal for an IPA. Uh, again, we're trying to keep it classic. We're also looking for a beer that's going to uh, give us a strawish kind of color. It should be um, light yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're brewing a light colored beer today. Okay, nice. So what's the next step? The next step is actually to weigh out our malts. Uh, the bags of malt here are one kilo. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna need 80 grams of wheat malt. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to weigh that out. We're also gonna have to weigh out 400 grams of pale ale malt. Okay, nice. Okay, it's finally time for the first step. Our brewing machine is beeping. It's telling us that the water has got to the right temperature for mashing. And 72 we, degrees. Is that is that always uh, or is it different from different recipes? It's different from time to time. Okay. Uh, it depends what you're brewing. Some beers you have to mash higher. Some beers you mash 
lower. This defines the thickness of the beer later, amongst other things, and also the fermentability. It depends on the temperature of mashing. We're doing it 72 degrees. The idea is that we're going to mash the beer uh, at 67, but we have to uh, get the water up to 72 because when we add the malt, which is room temperature, it's going to bring the temperature of the water down. Yeah, obviously. and we need to start at 67. That is the said to be the optimal temperature for mashing what we're going to mash today. And you told me that mashing is your favorite part of the whole brewing process. Mashing is my favorite part, so I'm quite excited right now. When we add the malt, it's going to smell like a bakery. Oh, nice. Uh, or like you've just walked into a brewery, which is the whole idea as we are brewing beer. So, and as we might have said before, we have a quite nice day of doing it out in the garden. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. We're out here in the archipelago in Stockholm <laughs> brewing beer. It doesn't get better than this. There's one thing missing, but I think we'll fix that soon. Oh, uh, you mean a, a cold a cold beer? I mean a cold beer. You can't brew beer without ah, drinking beer. We'll fix that. But it is time, so let's get started. So we're just going to remove the lid. And the lid was on to stop insects getting in. Uh, let's add our malts. So we already measured this one. Yes, the 400 grams of... 400 grams of pale ale malt. Uh, plus uh, two more kilos uh, plus of pale air malt. All oh, right. So let's get stuck in. So we're just going to pour this in. You don't have to be too pedantic about how <laughs> you pour in the malt. You just want to spread it out a little bit. Can you smell that? I can actually. <laughs> yes. So nice. this, the important thing here is uh, to stir it in mm -hmm. it smells good it smells great it actually smells like newly baked bread exactly like you said uh-huh and now we're adding even more so what do you say two kilos in two, two kilos and 400 grams that's correct so we're adding two kilos uh 400 grams of pale ale malt uh now it's we're gonna have to stir this in a little bit the beer does have starch and that causes uh, the malts to stick uh, to each other it's actually the starches that we want uh, and the natural enzymes in the malt these are going to be converted with the help of warm water to fermentable sugars nice so we're just going to give that a nice little stir make sure we don't get these dough balls as they're called uh -huh. i like to call them meatballs <laughs> We just give that a little stir and then we'll add some more malt even more even more malt and this time so now we're going to add our flaked oats this again will give us better foam stability and uh will also give us a bit more body nice we're just going to weigh these out to make sure that we have the right amount according to the recipe which is here so we can have a look at it which is here now, if i remember correctly this container weighs 160 grams okay so we have 495 grams, which should be just fine. Okay. I hope. <laughs> so we're just going to add our flaked oats and we can go ahead and weigh out the next. We need, what do we have here? Wheat. All right. So we need 800 grams of wheat. Oh, <laughs> yay! Yay! On the money. So let's just stir in. We just stir in the wheat. So now our mash is going to start getting a bit thicker. So it's going to require quite a bit of stirring. We're also going to put the pump on so we get nice circulation. Mm -hmm. This will improve the conversion. Nice. So I just stir that in. Already it smells incredible. Yeah, it does. 
Before we continue, I would like to thank you for watching our content. We really put our hearts into making it, so if you like it, it would mean a lot to us if you like and subscribe to our channel as well as to share our content to help us grow. I also want to remind you quickly that this content is a segment from our late night show, The Night and Us, and we always premiere all our segments in that show before uploading them separately. Now let's get back to your content. All right, we're done sparging now, or lautering. Uh, let's go and feed the deers. Let's. All right, now we're done uh, sparging, lautering, adding the extra water and getting all those last fermentable sugars out. We're just gonna take a measurement to make sure that the uh, numbers uh, match with what we brewed. Uh, it's a little bit too warm right now, so we're gonna have to use a conversion, uh, which you will find on brewersfriend as well, uh, So we just drop in our hydrometer, give it a little spin, and then this will tell us the density of the wort, i.e. how much sugar or fermentable sugar is in here. And it's landed around about 1040. I think if we do a conversion, uh, we should get the right number. Okay, so now it's time to boil our wort. So we're just gonna turn the temperature up here to 100 degrees Celsius and that will boil uh, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So we just turn this up and then we're going to set the timer to one hour and that's the standard time for boiling most uh, worts. Uh, some beers you might boil a little bit longer such as lagers. Mm -hmm. um, but it also says on the recipe or... Today we're going to boil for an hour, yeah, as it mm -hmm. says on, as, uh, on the recipe. Yes. We've got 60 minutes. Uh, at 100 degrees Celsius. Nice. We just put the lid on to speed up the process. Okay, so while we're waiting for our kettle to reach the right boiling temperature, we need to weigh out our hops. We talked a little bit earlier about uh, the hops we're using. We're uh -huh. going to use uh, El Dorado and we're going to use Nectaron, which are hops from New Zealand that are new on the market. Uh, it's going to be really, really fun to try these. Of course. And these should uh, strengthen those stone fruit flavors that we're looking for in our beer. So, so hops is for flavor, but yeast is also for flavor, right? That's correct. They are the two things that add most flavor and aroma. Of course, malts do as well, but then uh, those malts we're not using in our beer today. So not entirely relevant. Maybe we'll take that next time. There are hop additions in different stages of brewing. This is the absolute first uh, addition of hops, mm -hmm. which goes into the beginning of the boil. Okay. And this is done for bittering. Okay. The longer hops are in hot water, mm -hmm. the more alpha acids are released through the oils of the hops. And that gives more bitterness. Okay. I always compare it to tea bags. Mm -hmm. The longer you have yeah. a tea bag in hot water, the more bitter it will be. And yeah, it's the same thing with hops. Okay. So we're gonna add hops in the beginning for the bitterness. We're gonna add hops halfway through our 60 minute boil mm -hmm. for aroma. Those are aroma hops. Then we're gonna do one more hop addition and that will happen on day three or four of fermentation. That process is called dry hopping for some strange reason. You're adding hops to a liquid, uh, but it's called dry hopping anyway. 
Uh, no one really knows why. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, and you do that one more time for aroma. We're not going to get any bitterness because the beer is going to be fermenting around 20 degrees Celsius. Therefore, there will be no bitterness extracted from the hops, only flavor and aroma, mainly aroma, which is what we're looking for. We're going to try and extract some fruity aromas from, from the hops. Mm -hmm. So let's measure out our first hops. The Nectaron. You see the on the packet, uh, the alpha acids around 11%. That's quite high. That makes it good for bittering uh, because we won't have to use so much of the hops, which are really expensive. Uh, if the alpha acid of the hops is lower, we'd need to use more of them. And therefore, the cost of our beer per liter is going to be a lot higher. Okay. So it's good to use high alpha acid hops for bittering. Let's weigh these out. So, oh, wow. If you just, if you just sm could smell this right now, this is gonna be good. So we're gonna weigh out 15 grams of these hops. And not a gram more and not a gram less, which is exactly what we've managed to do. 15. 15, all right, let's wait a second. Oh, too much. 16 grams, that'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you <laughs> changed your mind. <laughs> we changed the recipe here somewhere, I think. Okay, it's time. Now we are going to boil the beer and we're going to do this for one hour. And the reason why we boil the beer is to cook off or boil off even, uh, any um, unwanted uh, chemicals or compounds okay. uh, that might impact the flavor of the beer. Mm -hmm. It also allows us to uh, add hops, which is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna use our hop spider. Okay. And we use this uh, neat contraption to um, bathe. The hops, if you will. Okay. Oh, you don't want to mix it in? So we don't want to mix them in because it's going to change the color of the beer and it's going to get lots of gunk. All we want to do is extract the oils in the hops that give the okay. flavor, the aroma, and the bitterness. Mm -hmm. So we just throw those in there that we've already measured out. And then we give it a little stir to mix them in. And I don't know if you can smell that, but already there's a big hop oh, aroma yes. coming from here. Mm -hmm. So... Oh. And then we just leave that to cook. <laughs> and then we will be back in 30 minutes for the second top edition. Okay, we're halfway through our boil. So it's time for our second top edition. These hops will give us flavor and aroma. Also a little bit of bitterness. And we're using two types of hops. Uh, in this edition, we're using the Nectaron hops that we used also for bittering. And we're also using El Dorado hops, which are from America. Okay, but that's not a new one. No, sir, El Dorado have been used uh, a lot in IPAs uh, the last three, mm? couple of years. And nice. a very popular hop for IPAs. Nice. Also gonna give us the stone fruit juiciness. Nice. 10 minutes left of the boil. So it's time to add some yeast nutrient mm -hmm. and uh, we add this to help the yeast uh, activate okay so before the yeast so to speak exactly uh, according to the usage it says half a teaspoon for 19 liters which is what we're brewing today uh, so we're just gonna do a little bit of guesswork <laughs> as you normally half do. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon, so I would say that much. Mm-hmm. True. And also we're gonna add some protoflock. Some what? Protoflock. Okay, which, which is? is? It's a, a I guess um, cleaning agent, uh, which will uh, take away some of the, the haze 
we do want haze, but uh, we don't want a, a grayish color haze. We want a nice golden haze. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to put a pinch of that in, almost like adding salt. Can I ask you a question? Um, how much did we spend uh, during this beer today? Uh, I mean, except for the fact that you already had the the machines and, and so on. Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Uh, so for five kilo of malt, it came to around about 15, 16 euros. Uh, the mm -hmm. hops uh, equated to, if we use them all, which I think we're going to, is another 10 euros and the yeast was another 10 euros. So you could say that we've spent 36, 37 euros, something like that on this. On this but also the other things like this one, you need to have as well. Exactly. <clears throat> um, you, just, you can use them for, for many brewings. Exactly, so you can add maybe another euro uh, on top of that. So again, about 37, 37 euros in total. Or 19 uh, yeah, and that will give us uh, approximately 19, 19 liters. 19 liters or five, uh, five gallons, yeah. yeah, nice. yeah. So to chill down the wort, we need to attach our um, chilling spiral mm -hmm. to a water source. Okay. But first we're just gonna drop it into the wort to sanitize it. It's boiling, okay. so it will cook off any bacteria that's on here. Okay. Yes! We're done. We're done finally. It's getting dark actually. <laughs> so it's uh, time to uh, chill this uh, down. We're just gonna get some of this nice hop juice uh, out of the kettle, like so. Mm -mm -mm. Smells good. <laughs> it does. We dunk this here. We turn off our brewing kettle. And then we take it over to the tap. Okay, so we've attached our hoses and our water source to the uh, chilling uh, spiral. So we're gonna send water through uh, here from our water source. It will uh, go around the spiral and then out here. And instead of just uh, disposing of the water onto the ground, we're gonna fill these canisters and water this beautiful garden. Reusable water, huh? So the basic goal right now is to get the temperature down to the level which the yeast will like, which is approximately 22 degrees. Chill it down the wort until uh, 25, 26 degrees. When we move it over to our fermenting vessel, our carboy as it's called. Okay. Uh, we should bring it down to 20, one twenty two degrees which will be the right pitching temperature for the yeast this will help the yeast uh, work faster and not create any lag uh, so we're just going to move the beer over using our siphon and we have to have this a little bit higher because that's how gravity works i guess we just pump this through like so and then let us do it uh, let it do its thing which is also kind of a video how you steal uh, gasoline. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're siphoning beer, no petrol, but th this is how you do it. Okay, before it gets too dark, uh, we can't stand out here anymore. We're gonna pitch the yeast. Um, let's do that. So. And all you have to do with dry yeast is just sprinkle it in, like so. Just be 
careful not to touch the edges. Mm -hmm. We don't want to put any bacteria okay. on the fermenting vessel. Put on our lid. Then we just need to give it a good shake, a good uh, swirl. All and right. then put our uh, airlock on top okay. to allow air and carbon dioxide to escape from the beer while it's fermenting. Mm -hmm. And that's it, we're done. And then it goes for yeast. We're gonna we're gonna ferment this for two weeks. Two weeks. And then give it another week to clear up, but it's probably gonna ferment uh, within one week uh, with my experience with this particular yeast. All right. So in theory, we could actually bottle it in one week, but we're gonna give it three weeks, which is luxury, uh, just to allow the flavors to settle mm -hmm. and to clear up the beer. Nice. But otherwise, we're done. Brew cool. day done. <laughs> Brew day done. So, over and out from us at Learn by Doing Brewing. <laughs> See you next time. Until next time. Yeah.